Lakeland Currents, your public affairs program for North Central Minnesota. Closed captioning is made possible by Bemidji Regional Airport, serving the region with daily flights to Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. More information available at BemidjiAirport.org. Hello again, everybody. I'm Ray Gildow, host of Lakeland Currents. I'm really excited about the program today because the topic is opportunities in agriculture. And I think you're going to find their opportunities are different than what you think. We're not going to be talking about making you to be a farmer, although there's not a thing wrong with being a farmer, but it's a, a, a lot of the other opportunities that are involved with Central Lakes College uh, campuses in Brainerd and Staples. And uh, I'm just going to go around the room and have you guys introduce yourselves and what your titles are in your opportunities here in agriculture. So Nate, let's start with you. I'm Nathan Weezy. I am the Precision Food Production faculty member uh, Central Lake College uh, started new this year, new program. And I'm Corey Detloff. I'm the Director of Ag and Energy and Farm Business Management at Central Lakes College. I also oversee the Meat Cutting and Butchery program as well as the Precision Food Production program. I'm Jess Fairbin. Uh, I am the Meat Cutting and Butchery uh, instructor at Central Lakes College. And as we are talking beforehand here, uh, there used to be like 10 different meat cutting programs in Minnesota through the technical college systems. I think the last one to close was in Pipestone, if I'm not mistaken. And there was always a need for meat cutters, but the challenge in vocational education has always been to get students into the programs, which I'm sure you folks have experienced somewhat to some degree. But I think one of the things that we can tell today for this program is there are great opportunities here and there's really good pay. It's just a matter of learning what those skills are that are needed to get out into the world of work. Corey, do you want to start with giving us some overview of, of what you guys are doing? Uh, yeah, so on the meat cutting side, um, you know, it's a partnership with a lot of different agencies, really. Uh, Minnesota Farmers Union, MDA, and a lot of others that are involved as well. Um, but really, we're looking at expanding the program. The, the program started a year ago, um, so this is our second fall semester of this, and it's a one semester certificate that's 16 credits. But students can come in, do that, kind of an accelerated program, but really get a good idea of what that meat cutting looks like. Um, we are talking about, and I'll let Jess expand on this a little bit, but we are talking about some other opportunities to expand that down the road with more certificates that we can add on top of that, like the value added processing, the smoking of meats and all those different pieces. Um, and then also there's a, a business side of this too, right? So there's there's the business aspect of how do you start, how do you merchandise, how do you do a retail aspect, um, and all those pieces too. So really, the opportunities are, are really out there and we've, the community and statewide, we've experienced a lot of issues with meat cutting, especially since COVID, um, when animals were not able to be processed and they were just, there was a lot of challenges with that. So it's kind of in response to some of that. It's been happening prior to that already, prior to COVID but we've really finally got kind of legs underneath us and getting going with that program. Brought on Jess, phenomenal faculty member there that is very much hands-on with this program. And I'll turn it over to Jess to talk a little bit more about some of those opportunities. And, and before you do, are you just located at Staples? Yes. And then you, did you take a part of the building and then redesign it for the program? Or, or how are you set up there? So we're currently right now where we are working with a company out of Washington to put a brand new state-of-the-art facility in. Uh, oh, that wow. should be coming here next year. Wow. Currently right now what we're working on is, is kind of redoing uh, a portion of the school right now and getting some equipment in there and what we will hopefully have the opportunity to do is bring in animals and process them down uh, within the school and then that way all of our students they, they're going to learn farm to fork virtually. So will this be on the uh, main campus or will this be over in the Ag Center across the street? Uh, this will the be animals. this will be on main campus. Okay. Yep, and the animals there isn't going to be any live animals really associated with the college. Uh, we'll just be bringing them in um, as carcasses and then processing okay. them down from there. That way, the students get a, a real hands-on experience of where these primals and subprimals and and things like that come from and how to break them down and then also how to make a carcass yield the most money uh, with the different cuts out of there. And, and what's your background that you got started in this? Um, my background depends on how long you want to talk here, I guess. But, uh, you know, I, I got my first experience in the meat industry when I was 14 and in cleaning a facility in southern Minnesota uh, just for in high school, just as a, as a after school job. Um, after that, I really kind of took a liking to it. Um, so graduated 
and uh, got an opportunity to run a meat shop here in Northeast Brainerd for nine years and did that. And after that, I went to Costco and I managed their meat department for the last 10 years oh, prior really? to taking this position. Was that in Brainerd too? Yes. Yep. So wow. I was able to open the Costco here and, and, uh, and then manage that for 10 years. And then the opportunity came out to teach. Uh, and so I jumped on that opportunity um, just so because it's a, it's a, meat cutting is kind of a, a, a don't want to per se, but a dying breed of people that uh, we haven't really paid attention to in a lot of years. Like you have mentioned Pipestone, uh, you know, they quit in 06. Granted, their their glory days were probably around in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they kind of kind of lost interest there. And, and uh, there isn't a lot of guys who know the start to finish process of, of processing a beef. Uh, what we've found in the industry is that there's there's a lot of people who know maybe one sector of it, whether that be breaking down the primals or working a retail counter, but there isn't a lot of guys out there that know how to bring it from farm to fork. And what COVID, as Corey has mentioned, kind of exposed is that, is that we need those people. And uh, we haven't been paying enough attention to that career. And uh, by putting this program together, we're able to to uh, to cater to that that uh, that career field too. Do your students uh, get involved with actually putting the animals down, or do they just get involved with the carcass forward? Uh, so we will go into he humane handling. Yep. So um, you know it's not just as simple as putting the animal down. There's a lot of other things that have to take place prior to that. Um, but once we get this facility, we'll be working really close with the Farmers Union, who is also having a facility in Staples as well. And we will have full access to their uh, processing area as well. Um, at that point, we will be able to experience uh, the harvesting of the animals and it will go from start to finish. So how, how will that work with your partnership with them? How do you, are you going to have some things at the campus and then some things in their own are they having a new facility being so built? they're having a new facility built um, we're not quite sure when the when the date of that will be here but um, and they're going to be under USDA inspection there and what they're going to be doing is processing local farmers oh. animals in there okay and then you know they're going to have a, a hours of operation probably you know 8 to 4 30 and in our classes currently are from 4 to 8 so we'll be able to uh, use that that facility after hours and uh, that's where the students can learn the humane handling and then the harvesting of the animals. From there, what will happen is it'll go into an aging cooler. And then from the aging cooler, it'll go over to the college with a transfer truck. And at that point, then we can take the students in and we can really slow it down, the process, and, and uh, work with them in detail on, on what they need to, to achieve to extract what they need to out of these carcasses. And when you talk about um Recruiting students, you were talking about. I think Corey said something like it's 16 credits, or yep. how long a period of time are we talking for people who don't know what that means? Yep. So right now it's 16 <laughs> credits. It's uh, four hours uh, a night, and uh, it's a semester long. So it's 16 weeks is what it is. So it's evening class. We're currently, right now, it is. Yep. And then, yep. is your ultimate goal is to have it um, daytime and nighttime, or just daytime, or just nighttime? Uh, you know, right now, as Corey had alluded to, that we're gonna we're gonna do more certificates. So right now, what you would get after that 16 weeks is a is a kind of an introduction meat cutter certificate, um, which is recognized by some of the local businesses um, that will that will start you out at a higher wage because now you know the information that you need to achieve this job. Um, and then we're gonna do stackable. So some of those hours will probably get moved to during the day, depending on what what courses they are taking. So. As Corey mentioned, uh, we're going to do smoking and curing, uh, and then we're going to do an entrepreneurship type program as well. And there will probably be some other business uh, courses that would be needed to take in order to do that too. And the reason we want to do that is because we, you know, when we first started this program, we probably had two to three different meat facilities within Minnesota calling us up saying, hey, we need the help. But not only do we need the help, uh, we're to the age where we want to retire and we are looking to sell our business or pass our business mm -hmm. on. And so uh, to kind of fit the need of that, what we decided is, is uh, you know, maybe putting an entrepreneurship type uh, course together where these students can, can read a profit and a loss and can manage a business and, you know, plug the holes on a leaky ship if needed and uh, make sure that that business carries on and is still successful for generations afterwards. When I was a kid, we used to have lots of things we call locker plants. <laughs> and mm -hmm. there aren't many locker plants anymore per se where you could take in your own animals and have them uh, 
processed, and, and that's something that's gone away, isn't it? It sure is, yeah. You know, we, uh, we're coming up, well, deer seasons are, are generally pretty popular, and, and we get a lot of phone calls of people, where do I bring my deer, where do I bring my deer? And, and uh, there isn't a lot of facilities that are even doing that anymore. Um, so, you know, hopefully by doing that, we'll give everybody an opportunity to get their deer processed, you know, and, and uh, keep some of these businesses alive, so. That's pretty cool. And we've seen a big swing in, in uh, uh, just in the, how people eat too, right? So in COVID, we had a lot of bare shelves in the, in the grocery stores and that really made people start to think, well, you know, is this an issue? Maybe we should find out where to get meat if the grocery stores run out. So you're starting to see a little bit of a, a trend change where people are, are looking to their local farmers and looking to their local processors to get their proteins, right? Well, what they're finding out is that there's, a, there's cattle out there um, and there's farmers out there willing to sell their cattle to, to people, um, but there's nobody to process it. And what they're running into is all these processes are getting bombarded and a lot of them, you can't get an animal in for a year, even to two years oh, right now. really? Yep. Wow. That's how far out they're booked out. So we're starting to see, you know, the value in this, in this field as well coming back, you know, with uh, processing dates that far out. Uh, there's a lot of room in this in this industry for for people to start up their own and for people to become meat cutters and help out those people that are already open as well. So, so what, what are you talking for for animals? What what are the animals that you cover? Uh, the animals that we cover is going to be uh, poultry, swine, lambs, and beef is okay. what we cover. Uh, in the fall time, we also do do deer processing. So what we do is we take ten deer and we process those, and uh, we'll bring those from start to finish as well. So. Uh, we got a couple hunters or students want to bring in their deer that they harvested that weekend. They can bring it in and we'll, we'll process it and we'll show them how to process it uh, to meet the, the standards of the industry. And I would guess that the job market is very, very lucrative. The job market is very <clears throat> lucrative, yes. Yep. People and a lot everywhere of opportunity. Looking, I know lots of, I have a friend that has a supermarket and I know they can never find somebody to butcher their animals or even cut up the finished product. You know, so they get quarters maybe or whatever. Yeah, or yeah. to produce sausage. Yeah. Um, hams and bacon uh, is really hard to come by nowadays. Really? Yep, yep. So, so you know, will you, you cover that too, how to make bacon? We will. That's going to be one of those stackable certificates on top of it um, that later in the years, uh, maybe in the next year or two, that we'll be putting that course together as well. So in that course, uh, the students will be able to learn how to cure and, and smoke um, sausages, hams, bacon, some lunch meats, things like that. So who are your partners? You talked about Farmers Union. Do you have other partners you're working with? Um, yeah, you know, we have an advisory board. Um, every course in CLC has an advisory board and, and we have some other partners, uh, you know, Gohan Supply, um, you know, he helps us out quite a bit. Um, Barbecue Smoke Shack, you know, just some, just some local resources that we have of, of guys who are working in the industry, industry and kind of give us a little bit more insight on what their thoughts are in the direction that we should take these courses. So it's it's been pretty easy to find to find partners in the uh, in the meat courses, um, just because everybody knows that there's such a need for it. Is there anything important that we are missing here on the the meat cutting portion? No, I think I mean there's a lot of opportunity in meat cutting going forward, right? And that's there's a lot of support, there's a lot of partnerships. This wouldn't be possible without those partnerships, so that's certainly appreciated. Um, I hope we can get a good workforce out there where we can continue to provide opportunity because that's really the bottleneck. Just like Jess talked about having animals processed, there's a limited limited places to go and limited time frame on when you can do that. You so, you're, so you're talking about individuals who might want to do their own business and then people that might want to go work at Costco or one of the big sure. stores Absolutely. And, and have all of those skills involved. Both opportunities. Yeah. Yep. yep. That's yep. Pretty and cool. there's a lot of opportunities within the meat industry. You know, we talked a little bit about harvesting the animals, but if that is something that somebody doesn't want to partake in, there's a lot of other uh, fields within this industry that, that they can partake in. If they just want to cut steaks or if they just want to make sausage um, or if they just want to do a retail. That doesn't really have anything to do with the harvesting end of it mm -hmm. um, because sometimes people don't want to take part in that and that's fine. There's other opportunities. Um, so there's retail, marketing, wholesale. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really crazy how many jobs there actually are in this industry that, that a lot of people aren't aware of. Are there any other colleges in Minnesota doing this right now? Currently right now, there is one other college. Um, it's in Wilmer. Uh, 
Ridgewater College mm -hmm. is, is also has a program. Um, so they're kind of a sister college to us. And uh, so their, their program is a little bit different than ours. Um, they're more on a apprenticeship type um, program where we're more hands-on in person. Um, so, so yes, there are other colleges that do it, but they're, uh, they're structured a little bit different than ours. Okay. So Nathan, you want to talk a little bit about what you do? Yeah, so um, we started a new program this year, Precision Food Production. Kind of been in the works for what, four or five years? Four years probably? Yep. Um, really uh, tying together um, back in the 80s. They had uh, farm business management programs, uh, different programs there at the school. And Dell had told me that in the 80s and 84, they went from 20 egg programs in the state of Minnesota down to three. Mm -hmm. And so now um, 40 years have gone by and there's a need, uh, again, for people in uh, agriculture to do a lot of the jobs like meat cutting. It hasn't been um, a big focus there. And there's a lot of people in the industry that are getting older, close to retirement, and then they're looking at it going, there's not people to replace us. Um, and so they started the new program, Precision Food Production, um, given a vast, it's a two-year program, a diploma, uh, given a vast uh, approach to the different aspects in agriculture. Uh, so there's going to be different classes on what's unique for us is we have a 2,000 acre farm that we're able to utilize there as an enterprise unit of the college. Uh, so going over there for lab classes and taking advantage of that, of real life experience right there. Uh, but being able to train these students to go out and work in the egg industry. Um, and as Jess was saying, there's a lot of opportunities, not just being a, a, an advisor, a crop scout, uh, crop insurance, uh, different aspects are looking for people that are educated, uh, knowledgeable of the aspects of what goes on. Because there's been a, a real disconnect over the years of that farm to fork, where, does the, where do the products go and what do they get used for? Um, what's what's going on in the egg industry? Uh, one thing that's unique uh, for us is that uh, doing uh, partnerships with the MDA, uh, different companies out there. So there's a big focus on water quality now, and uh, we got classes for that. That's new to our program and very unique to our program to working with uh, different partners and uh, looking, taking an in-depth look at uh, how does agriculture and the environment work together and then uh, doing a lot of the, the more basic stuff, nutrient management, um, the beginner level all the way through a advanced uh, precision egg, uh, what technologies are available. It's a changing world and it's changing fast. So. so what are some of the skills that are being taught in your program? Some of the skills being taught, so right now, uh, first year we're teaching nutrient management uh, so the basics of crop production, what's it going to take to to produce the crop, uh, what resources are available, fertilizers, uh, chemicals, um, soils, and how do each of in different soil type uh, react, whether uh, what region of the state you're in might use this type of fertilizer, uh, this chemistry uh, for spraying programs, um, as well as then you know, water holding capacity for irrigation. So we're trying to look at it from a whole viewpoint of uh, start to finish. Uh, what's it gonna take starting from planning at the beginning of the season to getting your end result uh, of a crop that's harvestable. Um, and for the students, there's a lot of opportunities whether they wanna go back and work for a farmer. Uh, what, what part of that, that whole en envelope that they wanna work within um, whether they want to go back and be a farmer, help on a family farm, or if they want to go and work for a co-op and providing services there, spraying, fertilizer, uh, crop planning, um, advisor, scouting. Um, so we're, we're, we're trying to train the next generation to uh, be able to help the egg industry to as, accomplish some of those things that, uh, as Jess was saying, that people are starting to retire out of and we we need more people to help fill those shoes. And you've got 2,000 acres that you're working with. Uh, talk a little bit about the equipment, because uh, I know, Corey, you've been in a couple parades with tractors that are about as big as a house. <laughs> yeah, so we were fortunate with the Egg and Energy Center. We have about 2,000 acres, different research and demonstration projects happening on each of those acres. 
Um, and we really work with local producers and a number of different partners around some of the things like Nathan mentioned, the water quality, the soil health, some of those different factors, um, precision irrigation, precision equipment, right? So we're fortunate we've got a relationship with Midwest Machinery where we lease equipment from them. Um, and then we have that educational piece along with that. So we've got the latest and greatest technology, the GPS, we've got the precision planter to be able to shut off individual rows and do variable rate prescriptions uh, and do all of that kind of stuff. And we work with a number of partners that provide us opportunities for those things. So we really have kind of one of the biggest playground and it, the precision food production you think about, it's, it's around agronomy, right? But what you're really doing with agronomy is you're producing food in a precision manner. So we're not just taking the planter out of the back 40 anymore or out of the woods and pulling it out and going and planting a corn crop. Um, you know, that's kind of a thing of the past. You've got to have all that technology to really focus and do a good job. You want to have as much technology as possible and utilize those new aspects out there. Um, you could certainly plant with an old planter yet. I'm not saying that, but you need to, you know, the new generations are looking at as much technology as we can integrate. How can much we do this? Production. How can we do this production in a better way that's better for the environment, mm -hmm. more environmentally sustainable, right? And so that's what we're really using is that technology to do that. And then we're producing food. But if you think about precision food production, it's not just on a large scale crop side. We also have things like high tunnels. Um, we have a a shipping container that's outfitted for year-round growing, What's vertical growing. Tunnel? What's a high tunnel? So a high tunnel would be like if you think about a greenhouse, but it's got, you're planting stuff in the dirt in the ground rather than having shelves in there where you're starting stuff in pots in a greenhouse. So you're utilizing the natural soil there, but you're extending your growing environment to a, you know, being able to plant sooner and hopefully have that going later in the fall. Um, so you're really extending those things. Then within our growing container, or our shipping container, it's called the pod that's outfitted with vertical growing. We really have the ability to start seeds in a seedling area in little plugs, and then we can take those, transplant them to other areas like the high tunnel, or we can actually utilize them in the vertical grow panels and be able to do that with no soil, no external sunlight. It's all self-contained um, mm. HVAC units on there. It's all done by lighting within there. Um, and there's pumps and all kinds of things that do that and nutrient management sensors that sense and actually automatically change your pH levels, your nutrient levels within that. So the, the technology behind that, so if people think about precision food production is only for a farmer, it's not because it's, we really have those opportunities too. So we also have an urban farm business management program that we started and specialty crops. So um, with that, some of those producers are, would be very interested in how do you grow in a high tunnel? How do you grow in that vertical growing environment with that technology? So some of those pieces can be integrated with the program as well. So it's really an all around program. You know, a number of years ago, the state redesigned the agricultural uh, technical colleges and ag. Could you just talk a little bit about that? Because it's called something different now than, we used to just have ag programs at technical college campuses, but now you have a network, don't you? A, a state perspective of this? Yeah, so we have, uh, we now have, well, Eggcentric, right? Eggcentric is um, right. one of the centers of excellence. So now they have a couple of different ag centers of excellence. There's a northern center and a southern center of ag excellence. Um, the northern center is Eggcentric. And we're fortunate enough to have Eggcentric housed at Central Lakes College, uh, which gives us a good partnership, right? And Eggcentric is also a partner in a lot of the things like the meat cutting, the precision food production, a lot of the different pieces that we're doing. And really the overall goal, right, is to build ag programs, build opportunity, educate, and do that outreach piece around agriculture and what's there. It's still a huge, huge business in Minnesota. A uh, thing that amazes me how, is how you can go down with GPS systems and know in the field where you need more, uh, pro maybe you need nitrogen and, or less water. And, I mean, to, to be able to do that on a grid, it's just unbelievable. The technology. I know some of the old farmers I know have no idea how to run this equipment anymore, and so you got to go to someone who's being trained. But it, it's increased productivity so much, hasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And you think about some of this technology, and we also have horticulture programs, we have natural resource programs, um, we have an ag science AS where you can take that and move on to another university or whatever the case may be, um, and animal science and a number of different programs around agriculture. So it's not just these three programs, right? I mean, you've got multiple areas you can go. And I look at this as we can overlap a lot of this stuff. 
Um, that technology, you can use that for your lawn, your turf mm -hmm. management mm -hmm. um, in horticulture or in landscaping or in natural resources. It's important to know some of these things. Nutrient management is certainly a part of natural <coughs> resources and soil, soil health, soil sampling. You know, so some of those pieces, they certainly overlap and that's what we've got going really for us at Central Lakes College is we work together as a group. Um, on the meat cutting side, you know, we've got Ag and Energy can produce some of that food that could be used with the steak that he's cutting and then prepared by a culinary. You know, we wow. have a culinary program. Yeah. So we look at that as this is a true, really a true farm to fork experience that if we tie these programs together, we can offer something that nobody else is really currently offering. And how many campuses are doing ag programs right now? For Central Lakes College? No, how many uh, colleges in the state are, are still involved in agriculture to some degree? Oh, I would say a lot of them probably have some sort of agricultural program. Um, to the extent uh, that Central Lakes does, probably not near as many. There's yeah. probably only a handful on and that. And you still so. have a pretty solid relationship with the University of Minnesota, don't you? We do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's pretty exciting stuff that you guys are doing. It really is. And if people haven't been to the college for a while to see what these programs are, you have open houses. You have a new semester starting when? Um, uh, it'll be early January. Um, so for the meat cutting course, uh, it's two semesters uh, is what we do. So it's a semester long, but there's two semesters in a year. So our second semester will start here uh, early January. Okay. Um, and CLC has given us a really good platform to make these, uh, these courses very affordable. Um, so for a very, very small cost um, to get into agriculture, uh, you, can do, you can do that through Central Lakes College. We're out of time, sorry. <laughs> but you have a website, Central Lakes College has a website. You can all be contacted through that website, I do believe. Certainly. Um, so there are opportunities in agriculture I think a lot of people just didn't realize. Thank you guys for jumping on board with us. It's, um, it's an exciting field that you're in, you're doing a great job. Thank you. I'm Ray Gildow. You've been watching Lakeland Currents. So long until next time. <laughs>